All right, let's take a look at how to automate intents. You might be wondering what intents is. Intents can be thought of as a data structure that holds a description of an action to be performed. It's used to pass data around between activities a lot, and this is one of the major use cases. Let's see how to work with it with Espresso. So this is a sample application. Let's understand the application first. I have an intents basic sample wherein I have a text box, a call button and a pick number. If I choose pick number, it's going to generate a random valid phone number. And when I tap on the call number button, it's going to launch a dialer screen, which is a different screen or activity within Android. Now behind the wraps, our application fires an intent to essentially launch this dialer screen. And let's say we want to validate that our application has successfully launched the dialer activity. In case we want to validate that the activity actually launched, we will use intending. And let me show you an example with some code. Before we begin to work with intents, we need to add espresso hyphen intents dependency to our apps build.gradle. Also note that this is only compatible with Espresso 2.1 plus and Android testing library version 0.3 plus. So we need to make sure that the version of those dependencies is also updated. Once done, as we have been seeing, we launch our activity using activity scenario rule. In this case, it's dialer activity. There are a couple of key setups and teardowns we need to do to make intents work. So we write a method called as setup intents, annotate it with add before and call the init method inside. What this would do is it will initialize our intents and begin recording. And this would ensure that whenever our application actually calls that intent, we have a way of verifying it. Finally, once we are done with our test, we need to clear down any state that we created. So we call the release method inside a teardown intents method and annotate it with at after so that after every test, this particular block gets executed. To work with our test, we need to grant it the call phone permission, which is in this case, we can just use grant permission rule called the grant method on top and just pass it the permission that we actually need. We annotate it with at rule so that JUnit automatically calls this for us. So now coming to our test, this is a plain simple example that we have been seeing. We find a text, we find an edit text using its ID and we type a valid phone number, close the keyboard. Once we are done, we tap on a call button using ID. So now assuming that the user tapped on the call number button, we want to verify whether our intent was actually called, right? So for that, we use the intended method. An intent can usually be thought of as a sort of key value pair wherein you have actions specifying different actions like in this case, basically launching a dialer activity or it could be other actions, system actions within Android and whatnot and has data basically has some representation of data that we want to pass across activities. In this case, it's a simple phone number and we'll see that in our test in just a moment. To make sure that both the assertions happen, we wrap it with an all of matcher, which is going to only pass if both the conditions evaluate to true. All right, so before we move on, let's take a look at an actual test. For this example, we'll use the intents basic sample from our testing samples repository. And you can take a look at the build.gradle. We use the standard dependency versions. And as I mentioned, we have Espresso intents already defined for test implementation so that it's available in JUnit. In terms of the activity, we have a simple dialer activity. And when I mentioned the structure for an actual intent, here you can see that we have an actual call to create a new intent with the type as action call. And the actual value in this intent is essentially a phone number. So we have the URI.parse, we give a telephone prefix, and then we give an actual number. 
here the number is actually the text that you set. Once this intent is called, if the request code is matching and the result is also valid, then we set the appropriate values in our field. Let's take a look at our test. So as I mentioned, we create our test class, we create a dummy phone number that we want to enter. We also grant the call permission and we set up to launch our dialer activity before the test initializes. Here you can see the add before method with the intent method being called and the release method called in a method annotated with add after. So this is our actual test. So assuming we want to perform the act of entering a number, tapping on call number and verifying that the intent validates, it has the exact same steps that I called out. So let's just run this test and see if it works. So as you can see, we enter the phone number, tap on call number, and as you can see, the dialer activity gets launched and our test passes. Great. Let's just cancel this activity now. So in the previous test, we saw that an Espresso intent could launch another activity and we can quickly validate them using the intended method. However, if we only care about the logic of our application and not so much about a third party application, in this case, a dialer application or a contacts application, which is let's say managed by Google or some other OEM, then we can actually just verify that our application made the desired call and actually stub out any call to this third party application. So let's see an example of how this is achieved with Espresso. So how do you set up a stub, right? Here we start with intending method and then within intending, we add a condition to check whether this is an internal call or it's not an internal call. In this case, we want to set a stub for our dialer activity, which is not an internal call. So we give that as the condition and we specify the behavior that we expect in this case. So whenever this happens, we want our stub to return some canned response, right? And in this case, we just return a new activity result from the instrumentation class and we return the result code as result OK with a null data type. So this is how you set up your stub. Couple of other use cases might be, you might want to just stub out any calls to a particular component that has a specific class name. In this case, let's say you want to stub out all the calls to contact activity. You can just specify that. You start with a dot followed by the class name. Let's say you want to stub out all calls to a particular package. You can also use the to package matcher there and you can just specify the package path. So let's take a look at the example and see this in action. So in the previous example, as you saw, we have the same code here, but let's say we want to set up our stub, right? I'll just uncomment this bit of code wherein we are setting the stub that I just showed you earlier. If you are interested in what is internal is, you can see it is an intent matcher provided by Espresso that matches whether the package is the same as the target package. In this case, we inverse it since we want all external intents to be stubbed and give the same canned response. So now let's just run the test. And if this works fine, our dialer activity should actually not get launched and our test should pass. So we enter the number, tap on call number, and that's it. No dialer activity launched. The test also executed faster.